right, guys. On this episode of the Ray, you have mentioned you wanted some detailed work of how to attach your ladder line to your coax. So we're going to go over that right now. So from reading the comments, you guys have uh, been curious on how I would or maybe a good practices on actually attaching your ladder line for your ZSX BKW or your G0 GSF to your coax. So here's what we're gonna need. We're gonna need your length of ladder line. I have a little sample piece here. We are going to need a center insulator. This is a Alpha Delta uh, in insulator from, I think I got this from DX Engineering a while back. They're just good to have, have on hand. We're going to need some spade connectors. This is a kit I got from Amazon. It actually has a, a heat shrink already attached to it, so it's kind of cool. And they're just, they're just crimp on. And we'll talk more about that in a minute. We will need the appropriate tool for crimping said connectors. There's several of them out there. You probably got one. And uh, if you don't, you can improvise. We are also going to use, like we've mentioned before, brass hardware. So we got a couple of uh, brass, uh, number 10, 24, one and a half inch screws, which will fit through the, uh, the insulator here quite nicely, not a whole lot of play. And then if you're using stuff you have on hand, it doesn't fit. If it, the screw's too big, you can drill these out a little bit. Uh, we have some brass washers and a couple of uh, number 10, 24 brass nuts to secure it all together. Then we also are gonna have uh, I got some zip ties and you want to use, uh, when you use zip ties, if they're outside, you want to get the, uh, usually the black ones, they're, they're UV protected, a little bit of resistance, so right there. And these I think actually came from uh, one of the big box stores, you know, blue and the yarn and Lowe's on Depot, whatever. And we'll need some strippers. Everybody likes strippers, but this probably isn't everybody's favorite kind. This is for stripping wire. So we're going to lay everything out here. Uh, first of all, what we're going to do is uh, you want to prep your ladder line here. And generally, you're going to want, if your measurement works out in the middle of a non-window where it's made up, you can just take a uh, uh, utility knife. You can cut down the sides here and open that up because you're going to want to be able to spread it out right across through there so it mates up with the screws without a whole lot of stress. So in fact, hang on one second. Why don't we take this opportunity, which side do I want to use? I'll use this side to do this now. Now you want to be careful because right now nobody wants to go to a hospital. We don't need much really. You could probably get by with just doing one side. Now you don't want to cut the actual uh, insulation for the conductor in there. So you want to be mindful of that. Oh, I could have used this other one. So add a utility knife to the stuff you'll need. So there you go. So now it's uh it's a little easier easier to deal with, and we can fold that back. We might need that later. So first of all, let's pick which connectors we're going to use. Uh, one thing you may want to do is get a screw out of your package. And let's find out what's going to fit the best. The nicest fit. That's a good fit there. Uh, yeah, we can go with that because we're going to be using washers. Or oh, there's another side. This is the blue ones. It's the blue, the pink, and the yellow. Uh, and there represents the different um, 
wire sizes. Blue is 14, the pink is 18, and the yellow is 12 gauge wire. But they all have, uh, so you have one, two, three, four different options on the, uh, the ring side in this kit. So we're going to get a couple of these bad boys out. And we're going to close the lid on this because you don't want to drop them. They will go everywhere. All right, so what we want to do, you kind of want to look at it, gauge how much you need to strip back. And then you just want to come in with your wire strippers and oh, strip that off. That's almost through. And then we're going to do the other side. All right, so these might be a little long. That's okay. Let's see how well it fits. They are. But that's all right. We can make this a little bit shorter. It's not that big of a deal. Helps to have sharp cutters. I'll go ahead and warn you of that. Can't be. That's better. Also, you want to make sure that your crimper is the proper, has the proper size, the proper diameter of a connector you're using. And yes, there are differences between the uh, insulated and non-insulated. Actually, I guess these are non-insulated, actually. They just have that heat shrink on them. All right, that's a good snug fit. All right, there you go. Now, typically you would want to use a uh, heat gun for this. However, I don't have one, so try to do this with this without burning ourselves. There you go, now it's starting to go. Also, you don't want to set the smoke detector off in your house or wherever you're doing this. Now you don't, this typical connection, you don't necessarily have to heat shrink. Uh, it just makes it look nicer, in my opinion. And there we go. Now, this is going to be warm. So you don't want to touch that quite yet. So. That's, that's next. So we already got one screw out. Let's get our hardware together. Uh, let's just go ahead and open. We will need a few washers though because we're we're gonna do uh, washers on either side of the screw. So let's get a few washers out. So for two screws, we'll need four washers. Look at that. I got lucky. All right. So you got a couple of options. You can go on the screw head side or you can go on the nut side. Now, later on, what we're going to do, we're going to talk about attach, doing the same thing with your coax and attaching that to get um, your feed point for the antenna to the matching section. So at this point, uh, we're going to put a washer on. Put that through the hole like so. Put this washer on. Attach one side of our ladder line. And 
get that started so it doesn't go anywhere. Get our second screw out. All the parts uh, will be linked in the description. So we got the screw, washer, put another washer on. We're going to attach our other side of our ladder line like so. Get our nut started there. Then all you got to do is tighten it up. Now a good way to do this is with a screwdriver and a nut driver. Um, so this this particular brass screw that I got their machine screws from from uh, Lowe's. They just have the flathead screw on them, which is fine. Uh, get you like a little stubby, put it in there, and then tighten it up with your uh, with your nut driver on the other side. Um, you could even put this in a vise to hold it for you if you are having a hard time holding it both in the same hand. And that's all you got to do to it. So next we're going to talk about prepping your coax and doing this for the same thing. But before that, we're going to take a break. So now we're going to talk about uh, prepping your coax to mate up to the ladder line that we made up on the uh, center insulator and insulator uh, that we did in the previous uh, segment here. Um, what you're going to do, you're going to take a length of coax. Uh, if you got a jumper that's already terminated with your PL259, that, that, that works. That's nothing wrong with that. I would probably, in this situation, if you're doing it for the ZS6BKW, Probably go ahead and get the coax long enough to make your uh, choke width. And the choke is six turns at six inches of diameter. So you can do the math and figure that out, or you can just uh, measure it out, find something that's about six inches in diameter, wrap it around six times through. There, there you go. There, there's your length. Uh, and that will need to be terminated PL259. So if you do that on the front end, Go ahead and measure that out. That'll make things a little bit easier when you get out in the field. Uh, kind of like what I want to like to do is just uh, for your measurement on how much you want to strip back of the outer is just take the uh, distance between the screws here. And then that way when you uh, spread it apart and made it up, it'll be a, a pretty good length for you. So that's a good way to measure that. So we have that. But first of all, what I want to do, I have some heat shrink. Uh, uh, you can use some heat shrink on the outer where the the outer shield and the inner come together when they, they form back up and just kind of seals it up. This I got off Amazon. I forget. I'll uh, find it. I'll link all this stuff in the description. But this, the neat thing about this that I found is it has the adhesive already in it. And when you heat it up, it'll uh, seal it up real good. Um, so I'm going to thread that on here and these are already kind of cut. It's not a great big long thing. I'm not going to trim it up. I'm just going to use what we got and give us something else uh, a little more support. So double check our measurements because it's a lot easier to make it shorter than it is longer. That's about right there. And you just want to take the outer jacket off. So what I like to do is just kind of go around and just kind of squeeze in a little bit. Just kind of chew it. And then once you get that, you can kind of bend it and break it. And uh, this coax is a little old, so it might be. There you go. Then you can just pull it right off. And there you go. There's your coax. Uh, for the smaller stuff like what we're using here, you can kind of pull it back and usually find, uh, take a screwdriver, something smaller than this, like a greenie. And you can make a little hole, a little opening usually big enough to bend this and just kind of push it back through. Sometimes that's a little easier said than done. Um, or you can use your little uh, blade here 
and kind of pull that back. If you need something smaller to get in there, be careful, don't cut yourself. And I always use the uh, blunt side, I don't use the, the blade side for that. You don't, really, you don't really want to tear it up too bad. So, all right, so we got it kind of started here. Oh, there we go. One more little piece. That's all right, that'll pull off. So the nice thing about that is everything stayed together. Um, just twist it back together. Now, if you're using bigger coax, uh, you can pull it apart, just kind of start unbraiding it a little bit, and you can take a small screwdriver and, <clears throat> you know, go down a few few braids and can just kind of push up and try to pull it apart and just kind of work your way all the way down. Um, so that looks really good. So let's find us, I think, that same size of heat shrink for that. And again, you can use uh, black electrical tape. I probably use the good stuff and tape that up, you know, all together. If you want to put a little RVT seal or um, something like that, some silicone in there in the center, just to keep water from building up in it, you can. Uh, you want to measure that length. That is a little long because you need the heat shrink shorter than uh, the conductor. So we're going to cut it. I'd go back about uh, with the terminals we're using. They're relatively small, so I'm going to go back a little bit. And they got some, some heat shrink already on them, so that'll just go over it. And then, you know, you can twist it, keep it tight, so that way when you're, when you're checking all this, all right, that's good. We can trim that up. So, again, um, we're going to, I don't have a heat gun, so... A flame of some type just go slow you don't want it to catch on fire you don't want it to burn yourself and you can see it just kind of and that heats up that glue in there make it all real nice and pretty now you don't want to melt the insulation off the center Conductor. You just want the shield. Ooh, I can talk. Let's make sure we got this. And I think we do. So we're going to sit that, let that cool. So the next part, we're going to get our connectors ready. And we're going to use the same little small pinks for this because it's about the same size uh, conductor. And we can just spot measure that, and I think that's going to work nicely. So since the shield's already pretty much ready, we're going to go ahead and work on that. All right, when that's cool enough to touch, put that on there. Thread it in there the same way. Make sure it's good and tight so when you push it down in there, it's got something to bite to. There we go, I see a little bit sticking out underneath. So we'll take our um, crimper. Oh. Give that a good tug, that's good. And we'll uh, We'll heat this up. Again, a hair dryer uh, works real good for this heat shrink, but sometimes you just got to use what you what you got. Naturally, as you can tell, I don't have a hair dryer, and uh, kind of proud of that. Maybe <laughs> there you go. All right, so that part is ready to go. Now, what we're gonna do, we're gonna strip some off here of the center conductor. We don't have to go terribly far back. There we go. We're gonna do the same thing here. This is actually solid. 
these crimp connectors work a little better when they are uh, stranded but this is what what we got and now the next thing we'll just you make sure this is cool enough because you don't want you don't want to be pushing this up this other heat shrink on the bottom on the total outer while this is still warm because you don't want it shrinking while you're trying to work you just kind of kind of light it up and this is going to be a tight fit probably might have should have gone a wee bit bigger let's see what we got here I think we might have something that's just perfect. So we bit there, and that's fine down there. All right, so that's good, tight. So you don't want to go all the way up. You just want to cover it just a little bit, maybe about a half inch or so, and uh, whew, light it up. Actually, you know what? We're going to use this smaller one too. I'm going to put this in here just to give us a little extra support. And that's okay. There we go. I don't want it to catch on fire. All right, now the key is not to burn yourself. All right, so we're going to set that over to cool. We're going to close these up so we don't knock it over and it hits the floor and stuff goes everywhere. And uh, let's uh, prep the center insulator here. So you got a couple options. You can go on the screw side or you can go back here on the other side. It's totally up to you. It doesn't really make that much of a difference. Uh, you kind of want to think, though, um, when it's up in the air and you put a little zip tie around here just to give it a little bit of extra support. Um, you know it's going to be hanging there then the coax is going to be i kind of like going on the opposite end and that way it kind of that kind of, that load kind of balances out some and that's just the uh anal retentiveness in me i'm going to take uh we'll start with the center conductor put the screw through then the washer because we want some uh relief there that spreads out the forces on both sides a little bit this is a little more strength you just put your ladder line back on there put the screw there now working out in the field when you're doing this um, maybe lay a towel down so when you drop it you'll be able to find it and you're going to drop it I think that's a it might be a requirement. You have to drop it at least once. You're going to see how this kind of works out here. Put the screw through. Put the washer on. And slide that through there. Put the washer on the other side. Put the ladder line back on and I see what I did with the uh, zip tie and that's okay. It's just a zip tie. I got a whole bag of them. Don't let that little thing stop your progress. All right. For this purpose, we're just going to go finger tight. So there you go. So now you got So now you got that. Now we need to take the strain release off relief. So let's we're going to simulate our uh, our choke here. That comes right up to there, right? And uh we'll say you got it taped up or you got it zip tied a couple times. We'll just put a couple zip ties on it. So when you got that now what you can do is take another zip tie. 
You can go through the loop, come out of the window of the window line of the, your ladder line here, go over the top of the insulator. And just kind of cinch it up. This takes a little bit of the uh, finesse. You can actually get it to go into the grooves of the insulator, it's even better. Because then it's definitely not going to go anywhere. This is kind of crossed through there. It's good enough for government work. And you might find some other stuff that works for you. So that's got your coax squared away. So let's take another one and we'll go through kind of the same way. So we're going to go through the top window just to provide some strain relief. Down through here, through the bottom of the insulator. And it doesn't have to be extremely tight, you know, just it's at least going to hold on to the, the loop of the coax and it's not going to go anywhere. Now you could go under the other one and make it a little better. So, you know, you can probably find some stuff that works better for you. This has worked for me. You don't necessarily have to do it this way. There's a, a million ways to do anything. So now you got your antenna going up the tree there. You got uh, your coax coming down with your, your choke. And uh, that's how you just, it's, it's really actually simple. I think we made it probably more complicated than it needs to be. But just, uh, you know, the right connectors, the brass screws, remember we talked about that, why to use brass is because even when it corrodes, it will still conduct and uh, they won't gall like stainless. And generally, even after they do start to corrode, you can get them loose again. So it's real good. It doesn't cost all that much. Everything will be in the description below. Uh, but that's pretty much about it. It's not, like I said, overly complicated. It's just uh, stripping the stuff back and putting connectors on it and securing it and, you know, making sure it doesn't pull itself apart. Um, but that is about it. It's not all that uh, complicated. Like I said, I think we probably made it more complicated than it needs to be, but that's uh, that's pretty strong right there. That's not going to go anywhere uh, for a long, long time. Now, remember, you know, it's out in the sun. UV rays is the worst thing on plastic or actually on a lot of things, most things except for glass. So, you know, you're going to have to pull some magnets on it every once in a while, but that's OK. It's what we do, right? Uh, minimal cost. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how much I have in all this, including the heat shrink and connector kit. It, it can't be terribly much, but I'll link all that in the description below uh, if you want to get that. If not, you don't have to. Like I said, you know, you can use black tape instead of heat shrink. And you can even just twist the wires together if you want to solder them or crimp them. You can do that. But this this has been a good way for me that I've had that's uh, lasted a long time. It's uh, easy to work on. Thanks for watching, guys. We will see you on the next one.